So today uh, we will move to a conceptual uh, like topic or you can say a theory about the logo design. So logo design is one of uh, like a uh, like a topic which is uh, you can say uh, a hype topic in the graphic design industry and uh, illustrator that we have, uh, we have been going through these uh, lectures these lessons is one of the tools one of the most uh, favorite tools of designers uh, which is uh, heavily used to design logo and it offers a lot of different features and uh, great options that can uh, like help you to create a good attractive logo but before jumping to illustrator and designing logo inside the illustrator we must know what the logo is and how a logo is designed first on the paper and then we move to illustrator because right away you cannot move to illustrator without conceptualizing your logo or uh, pre-designing a logo on a paper because first you have to decide what you want basically and then after that you will be able to complete the uh, like uh, complete it okay and then uh, bring it on the screen like on the digital screen so let's uh, I have this uh, uh, like a really good lecture which I got it from slideshare.com and it's a quick and extremely awesome guide to logo design okay so let's see uh, what do we have here now first thing uh, that you will uh, notice here is that we have a quick and extremely awesome guide to logo design and what this uh, lecture states so let's see in detail so first thing is that you have decided to take the plunge and start a business congratulations you are now starting your own business so just uh, we will take this as an example that uh, we are now going to start our business and it can be any sort of business it can be a startup it can be a uh, the restaurant it can be it can be an institute or school so whatever business we are planning to do so your future is sure to be filled with lots of exciting milestones so whenever you start a business you have milestone that you have to achieve on every level uh, for example product launch uh, first customers uh, reviews from news outlets and hopefully finding that you have achieved the goal of starting something from scratch and bring it into the world but for all the celebratory moments of establishing a business, there are many tasks uh, that can be a big task, can be a small task that you have to attend to. One of these is coming up with a logo for your business. Once you have a business, how you will represent your business, you will sh uh, how you will show it to people. Because name is one thing, but logo is something that will represent your business. So creating a logo isn't something you should take lightly. Uh, don't take logo design as one of the minor parts it's one of the major parts of your business launch okay and it's not something light it's something heavy that will lift up your business so if your business is a manifest to start stating your purpose and worldview your logo is the envelope you put it in okay so what it is basically your business can be a form of a letter or a memo or a manifesto okay but how you will present or give away that manifesto you will not just hand over someone just like normally you will enclose it inside an envelope and that envelope is basically your logo so your business is a manifesto and your manifesto is in an envelope and that envelope is a logo basically okay so in other words it one uh, it's one of the first things a customer will come into contact with a visual cue that will hopefully stick with them long after they've left you store or walked away from your advertisement so first thing that the uh, people look at it is the logo whenever they see a business so uh, its name so there is a logo beside it and that logo can attract people okay or maybe if it is not good it might have a negative impact on some people or maybe some people will uh, even uh, they will not have any sort of uh, like impact okay 
So that means it's hugely important to design a logo that is memorable and makes a consumer feel the way you want them to feel. So whatever is in your mind and whatever you want the people to feel about your logo, you should make sure that logo is delivering the same thing. If your logo isn't offering the same thoughts that you have in mind, then you, maybe you have not done a good job on creating that logo. Okay. So uh, uh, we'll talk about how to go about uh, like creating a striking logo that uh, attracts customers. Sets your brand apart. It is easy to understand and uses color in a way that the elects the emotional reaction you want. So let's see how uh, we go through uh, the process and uh, and create a, 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 like a logo in this whole uh, like process. Okay. Now let's first uh, see a bit history about the logo design. Okay. Now how the logo was started and when it was started. So the history of the logo, a logo isn't something that was cooked up by 20th century. Okay, so it's not something like that there's a 20th century invention. It was invented long time back, uh, like, you know, uh, years ago. So uh, advertisers and marketers looking for a way to make money off their clients the, by 20th century. It's not something like that. It was uh, way, way before that. So logos are actually complex representation of how human beings use language and visual cues. So what a logo basically is, it's basically a visual cue. You just want uh, people to understand your business by looking at a piece of a visual cue. Okay, an element, something that is visual. And that visual thing have to be so uh, explainable that when somebody sees that he can easily guess what your business is okay so let's see uh, what logo means the word logo is technically short for logotype okay so logo is a short form of logotype logotype which is descendant from a greek term that roughly means word imprint okay so logotype is basically a greek term uh, which, you know, uh, roughly you can say that it, if we translate that in English, it means a word imprint. Okay. One of the earliest examples of a logo is a coat of arms, a medieval symbol often worn by knights that identified their family or state. Another early uh, precursor to a modern business logo is the wax seal. So if you know uh, by the uh, 16th century, uh, people used to uh, have a wax seal wherever they uh, used to send letters to their, uh, like, you know, other countries or to other, you know, uh, dynasties and invitation or an information or an announcement. So they have, so they usually seal their letter inside an envelope and that envelope was, uh, used to be sealed with a wax seal. Wax was placed and there, uh, and, and there is a, some sort of uh, engraved, you can say, uh, a kind of a stamp which was placed over that seal and then it creates an imprint just like this one. So this is, uh, was, so this was basically, you can say it's a, a more like a logo, okay. So it's important to note that in each of these cases, logos had to be unique in order to identify the night or letter center. So suppose at that time, people uh, used to have logos, but the logos should be different from each other. So uh, whoever is received, like receiving the announcement, the letter or any other document, they can easily recognize from where it is coming. So years ago, if the logos have to be unique, that means the uniqueness of logo is really important till now. Because if you don't have a unique logo, you cannot create your own identity. You cannot create your own brand identity because your logo represents that and it has to be unique in itself. So the increasing focus on artistry and creativity and introduction of mass produced goods that came about in late 1800s could be considered to be the beginning of logo creation. Now, 17th century we are talking about here and we can say that logo was first used during the uh, 17th century for the products okay so however it was until uh, 1876 
which, uh, which is the late uh, 17th century, the first logo was trademarked. Okay, trademark means like you copyright a logo or make that logo as a symbol of something. So, and the red triangle you can find on every bass beer. So, there is a product of, of a bass beer, and the bass beer usually uh, uses a red triangle, and that became the trademark of this uh, product. Okay, and it was late 17th century. Now, Logos also became more important with the rise of the globalization. As things became more global, people started to use products of one country uh, from one country to another country. It was moving, uh, like suppose, if, uh, uh, centuries ago, uh, people when they were uh, consuming product of uh, their own country, those products then soon migrated to other countries. Okay. And that was the beginning of the globalization. Okay, so if there is uh, a product in England, so not only uh, English people are using that product, it goes to some other countries as well, and people are using that product over there too. So that's how the globalization started. So business ownership and manufacturers needed a way to describe their product in a way that could be recognized by people of all linguistic backgrounds. Now, if I don't speak English, so I cannot read English, it will be uh, not possible for me to understand what I'm talking about, uh, like what my uh, product is about. Okay, so a logo will be a one of uh, a vehicle that can easily translate the name of my company in uh, through a picture. Okay, and I will be able to understand that. So an abstract logo allowed them to bypass translation issue and offer an easily digestible way of identifying their business. It's important to keep in mind that logos began as primarily an artistic endeavor and artistry behind them can't be stressed strongly enough. So when the logo was started, it was purely for artistic purposes, but then it became a part of the business endeavor. Okay. Whether you're a business owner or medieval knight, your logo is distillation of ideas and emotions. So even if it is for artistic purposes, it's for uh, knights and uh, armies um, uh, that used to be in the medieval ages, but now it has moved to uh, global uh, advertisement uh, part era. Still, that uh, ideas and emotion counts. So your logo should have ideas and emotion. So it's the uh, definition of art. And even if your logo is little more than your brand name, uh, think about like IBM or Hallmark, a good logo will take these words and use color, font and design to give them life. Okay. Now IBM, if we talk about IBM, what makes IBM very famous? How it became famous? Like the word IBM itself, not it's, it's not uh, like, you know, uh, too attractive. International business machine, IBM. But what makes it uh, you can say uh, like uh, attractive or famous is the way the name IBM was represented. Okay, and one of the logos, if you will see that it started in 1947, and the way it was shown was very simple. Then by 1972, these include uh, like disclosure lines you can see here. Okay, made a unique uh, like a logo. Okay, and then uh, this became one of the trademarks of IBM, the, the scan lines. Okay, same thing goes with other logos like Shell. When Shell was introduced in 1900, it was just a picture of a shell. Then uh, going through ages and ages, they were used for, you know, different, like, you know, uh, uh, parts were uh, added to it, like, uh, they became minimalistic today. So not even, like you don't need a word shell anymore because the logo is identifiable. It's uh, uh, all around the world and people know this logo belongs to the company Shell. And from this to this, it's now a shell. So it, it there is a, like you know a, like color, font, and design is heavily used to give them life. So if you compare this one to this one, you can 
easily clearly see how the colors and logos have pushed the logo uh, you know on, on top so here you can see uh, how the IPM was started and how it is today okay and how the Canon was started and how the Canon is today now uh, there are some facts so we can keep that in a number of mind whenever we are creating a logo so these facts should be known so a logo is more than just a pretty design it's not like you design something really beautiful adding uh, a lot of elements to it uh, using design principles using uh, all the elements of design and creating something out of it okay so you're not making your your goal is not to make something look really pretty it should tell a story that lodge itself in a consumer's brain for a very long time so what is your product and how it is helping your consumers so a bridge between these two things is a logo basically so a recent study found that human beings do recognize the fact that certain logos stand for certain products around three to five years of age so it takes around three to five years to memorize a logo so once a person know okay this is the logo he will keep on looking at the logo like suppose if somebody show me m okay uh what uh, what does the m means to me m means maybe mcdonald's because that thing i've been looking for uh, since my childhood okay but here we're talking about three to five years which is uh, uh like a, uh, a very less time so it takes three to five years to uh, to understand the logo or to memorize a logo okay so a few years later, children aged seven or eight are able to regularly recall the logo. Suppose uh, if I take a story of me as a child, I always used to look at uh, the logo of McDonald's M. So there was a logo wherever there is a restaurant or wherever there is a poster or wherever there is an advertisement about McDonald's. So that M became the part of mcdonald's so whenever i used to see mcdonald's as a child maybe i did uh, i don't know the name of the company but that m uh, represent burger to me where whenever i see m uh, what comes in my mind not mcdonald's maybe burger or happy meal as a child okay so that comes in my mind and that became that m became the representation of that product not the name of the company okay so whenever as a child suppose i want to buy a, a like a uh a happy meal or burger or something so i've 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 been maybe looking for that m that word m so that m became the bridge between me and what i needed and what i needed was the burger okay so by the age of eight almost all children are able to correctly match a logo to its product now if you will uh like ask uh, if you will do as like little experiment there are some games on the mobile phones maybe if you have played uh, if you can search on on your mobile phone if you, whether you're using iphone or, or android phone search for an app which is called guess the logo it's a game where you can search uh, like you will be given logos and you can guess the logos and see how ma how many logos you can guess with it okay so try doing that experiment and also try to show those a few of the logos to a few if you have children around the house which are uh, 8 to 12 years old show it to them and also play with them and see how many products they are able to recognize okay now first of all your logo what you need to do with your logo what is the first thing you should be doing with the logo a logo has to be like the perfect bottle of wine suitable for an almost endless array of uh, situation so you should have uh, a lot of different uh, you will have a lot of different situations when you will be doing oh, like working on a logo maybe you will put your logo on a plastic bag which is uh, transparent maybe you will uh, put your logo on something that is a black color dark color maybe you will put your logo on uh, like a like a silver or chromatic uh, aluminium or, or something like that 
maybe you're putting a logo on a uh, window or maybe on a white background so all these uh, areas or these uh, like situations are different from each other and on each of them a logo might look different so you have to think about it that your logo will be going uh, on different areas and different products and how they will look on different products so what do you have uh, in your mind what plan do you have in your mind so it can be uh, like a you can say a, uh, it can be like displayed on any medium okay so before you start actually designing your logo think about what you're trying to accomplish how you're trying to portray your brand okay is it a edgy is it sophisticated it is whimsical it is feminine of how should your logo make your customer feel for what you are making your logo for okay suppose you are selling a beauty product so uh, you will go for a, a like feminine sort of uh, feeling okay if you are doing something for uh, like extreme sports or something you know gaming or those like that maybe you will go with the edgy sort of feeling okay if you are doing a, for a suit or a clothes like cloth line which is uh, very formal so sophisticated uh, you you might be using so uh, as a business owner you probably learned the importance of making list in early brainstorming stage write down the answer to the questions above if you are feeling creative pre associate a list of words that you use to describe your brand so there should be a logo questions okay and these you can uh, you know count them as a uh, like a like a question write them down and then you can answer them with few uh, answers then go back suppose if you have five answers for each question go back to your answers five times and every time you're going back you strike out one answer and whatever is left in the end is your should be your final uh, answer okay so it's also important to think about where your logo will appear sure the huge uh in intercept design okay uh let me check on youtube what happened here Okay, I think now it should be fine. Okay, thanks for telling me that. Maybe because there was some uh, streaming issue on YouTube itself, but now I, th I think it's fine. It should be okay. So, uh, here what i was talking about is that it's also important to think about where your logo uh, will appear okay uh, the huge interested design you came up with my uh, with might look amazing on your business card but how it will look on your storefront window your business card your website your company softball team so as uh, in the beginning of this slide i told you that your logo will be going to different uh, areas okay and everywhere the logo will look different so that you have to keep in mind when you're working on so you get the picture a logo has to be like the perfect bottle of wine suitable for an almost endless array of situations so while it may be tempting to think about your logo as a haircut something that you can change with ease it's better to think about it's a tattoo a, a telling sis uh, like you know a symbol that will be uh, with you for a long time okay so your logo is not a haircut that you can keep on changing so your logo will be like a tattoo that will be there forever and how you will deal with this so this is uh, you have to keep in mind whenever you are working on the logo itself okay now get inspired uh, it is always good to case study uh, other logo brands 
okay but, however uh, don't copy but uh, case study a different other famous logos that are out there so after you have come up with a list that describes the logo design goals make it your logo job to uh, make it your job to look at as many logos as possible so do case studies you definitely want to take a look at the logos of some of the world's most iconic brands like Nike, Starbucks, McDonald's, Apple, IBM, Reebok, Hershey, Procter & Gamble are, are all good places to start. So figure out what it is about them that you like. Is it their simplicity, their use of text and abstract shape, their color, their font? So see what do you uh, like about it. If you don't like some of them, try to figure out what you, uh, you would change in, in that. Okay. So again, a list of words or ideas, no matter how abstract, can uh, help you figure out what is about these iconic logos that you do and don't like. You don't only have to look at logos for inspiration. Uh, you can go to the art books, magazines, websites, even long walks can help you figure out what you want your logo to look like. Uh, if you want inspiration, it doesn't mean that you have to only look for logos. Maybe look away from logo and that can also help you. So you may also want to ask friends or family members what logos they like. It's, uh, if that's too difficult of a question for them, ask them what they think of when they think of your business. It's a very good practice to uh, you know, show the logo to your uh, friends or family members. Okay? And ask them uh, what they uh, think about it. Write down uh, their points. Some of the answers you get maybe uh, better than others but you can never have too much inspiration okay uh, but don't rely on inspiration a lot okay uh, take it as a guideline take it as some uh, some vehicle that can push you okay but don't take it as a hundred percent something that will uh, that you have to go through the, the whole uh, whole time okay now uh also sometimes it's good uh to ask for help okay now uh at this stage you're ready to start designing your logo if you feel confident your graphic design skills you should by all means go about coming up with the logo concept on your own so if you're a graphic designer you can do everything by yourself but if you're just a beginner the key to success is coming up with as, uh, as many concepts as possible so if you're just a beginner, uh, you might have some difficulties. So there you can start working on the concept first. Do the paperwork as much you can. So while it may be tempting to come up with one concept and tweak it for a long period of time, putting a couple of pieces or ideas on paper will help you to figure out your opinions and determine what you do and don't like. So don't spend uh, two to three months to uh, by conceptualizing your logo. Uh, just take a few days of time, like four to five days to conceptualize your logo. Because conceptualizing a logo, coming up with the idea is the hardest part. The rest is you are just tracing that idea on the computer. Okay. So that won't be something uh, like hard because already you have a plan in front of you. You have something uh, in front of you. You just have to replicate it. Okay. So if you get stuck, Ask for advice. Ask a trusted friend which version he or she responds to. In some cases, the less they know about graphic design and marketing, the better. So show it to people who are not professional graphic designer or those people who are not from marketing field. Show it to people who are in different fields. Okay, maybe if someone is a student or a doctor or a engineer and has nothing to do with the marketing or graphic design after all you want to know how the average person walking down the street experiences your, your logo because that's the reason you should be showing that to normal people instead of showing it to graphic designer or the marketing people because otherwise if you will show it to graphic designer or a marketing person he will always give you a different advice and you will be getting different advices of different people and then you will have a uh, like creative blockage okay so once you uh, have a creative blockage you will not be able to move further you will not be able to move on so make sure 
you show it to a normal person. Okay. Sometimes what happens, uh, as I have given you an image term about the logo design, students start showing me their logo and asking me for the advice. Because if you will ask me for your advice again, you will have a, uh, a blockage. So, do, uh, so uh, I, uh, like I, just, I suggest, don't show it to me, show it to a normal person. Because if you will show it to me, uh, what will happen is that I will be, you know, uh, like I will be giving an advice. And every time you will show me, maybe I will give you a different advice, depending on whatever you are showing to me. Then you will be stuck in, in, in a loop, which you will never be able to get out. So instead of showing it to me, show it, uh, show them to people who are regular, uh, normal people that you consider uh, someone who is walking down the street lo looking at your logo. Okay. So you should also consider hiring a professional to create your logo for, uh, your logo for you. So this is when you are in a company and when you're doing that. So if you don't know anything about graphic design, this may be a uh, like you know foregone conclusion. But even a business owner who knows or thinks they know. How to design a logo can benefit from turning to a professional for instance. Okay, this is for those people who don't have, know anything about the graph uh, about the graphic design or logo design. They can ask, like you know, ask for professionals. Some of the companies, like you know, you have started a company, you have a big budget, but even you know how to design a logo. If you can hire someone, if you can afford to hire someone to design your logo professionally, go for it. Because it will be a little different if you are designing a logo uh, from who he, he, uh, designs the logo for a living. Okay. So that's why uh, bigger companies, they always hire professionals. So having a stranger or professional work on your logo can offer valuable perspective. For instance, you might think a whimsical floral logo is best for your restaurant, but an outsider may introduce another element, a futuristic font or an unexpected use of color that totally changes how you envision your logo. Sometimes you think about, okay, uh, I'll, I'm opening a restaurant and I will put some flowers over there and, and you know, flowery sort of, uh, I will put uh, some design over there, okay? But maybe if you hire someone from outside and ask him to design, maybe he will introduce something futuristic for your logo that you were not expecting before. But when you see that, maybe you become like, you know, more attractive to that. Maybe you change your idea. Maybe you will change your idea about that. Okay. So, however, if you are turned to a professional for help with your logo, don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Don't rely 100% on them or, and don't give him 100% control. Try to put your own opinion there and try to work as a team. So be sure to tell them what you do and don't like. Don't worry about hurting their feelings. And of course, that list of words and phrases you created to help identify will definitely come in handy about now. So those questions which I told you to ask yourself and uh, keep it with you. Uh, and in this situation, that will be really helpful. Okay. Uh, so hiring a logo designer, solid logo designer, doesn't have to cost an arm and leg. Uh, and a leg okay, so uh, make sure you don't pay them extortionate uh, amount of fee they charge. There are plenty of places online where you can find talented creative professionals willing to work for a relatively low price in order to build their design portfolio and help out business owners in need. So these all things that I'm telling you is about if you are running a business and you don't know how to do it. Okay, but your task over here is to design a logo by yourself. So uh, let's see what are the elements that you have to keep in mind when you are working on a logo. Consider the color. One of the most important considerations for a business is the color or colors they use to identify their brand. Now, colors can leave a lasting impression and uh, elicit a wired range of reactions and emotions, making it an important thing to consider when creating your logo. So painting your offices or designing any of your marketing materials, colors are really important and you have to stick to the color that represents your brand. Whether you're creating a logo, painting your office, printing your stationery, use that color because that color will become your identity. So what exactly do these colors, those, uh, those color mean? 
So let's see that there are a lot of colors, but each color means something different. Now, if we look at the AT&T logo, AT&T logo is uh, made out of blue. So blue uh, is a color, okay, which uh, is usually uh, related to technology, okay, or you can say anything that is related to or part of a technology. So entrepreneurs says this uh, color is one of, uh, one that stands for being trustworthy, dependable, uh, fiscally responsible and secure. So makes sense when you think that this is the color is uh, this uh, this is the color is central to the identifies of the say, of Facebook, Walmart, AT and T, and probably your own town's police department. So blue, what does this means? Because check where the blue is used. Blue is used in Facebook. Uh, it's used in Walmart, AT&T, okay, and in US, uh, blue is used uh, for the police department. Also in Bahrain, you see like uh, for security police, uh, uh, like for the like uh, the non-traffic police, they use blue color. Traffic uses the red color. So why the blue? Because blue means uh, something trustworthy means something which is responsible, secure. And in IT, uh, in technology, these things are, uh, you know, uh, are part of that. So that's why blue, whenever you think about blue, it gives you that sort of uh, feeling because uh, we have been looking at blue in this form of, a, of the direction, okay? If you see blue, for a police department, for a uh, IT company, or for a online security company, or anything that is related to that. So automatically, whenever we see blue, we get the idea, okay, this is about uh, security or something like that, okay? Now, yellow. Fast company calls yellow an optimistic color that has the benefit of being bright enough to grab consumers' attention from a distance. Yellow is a high frequency color which you can see from a long distance. So it makes sense that uh, Denny's and McDonald's both are yellow in their logo since they are eager to attract hungry travelers on the uh, interstate. So the reason McDonald's used yellow for their brand is just not because they liked the yellow. There was a reason. Because if you know M has become itself a signboard and whenever you see M, you can see from a far distance. And automatically, it starts singles your uh, taste buds, and you feel craving to the, uh, you know, for those burgers. So that's what their plan is, like to make to attract people from very fast, far distance, and make it standing out. Okay, so that's one reason uh, of using a low or like a yellow. Okay, and one of the famous things that we talk about is creating an identity. Uh, you all know Yellow Pages. Now Yellow Pages is getting obsolete because now we are in a technology state. But Yellow Pages was a directory for phone records. Okay, The reason they used uh, Yellow was that because Yellow actually uh, represent speed also, fast or something like that. So Yellow Pages, if you want to search something faster, the yellow pages are uh, organized in a form that whatever you want information is all given there and on your tips the way uh, if you will uh, shuffle it easily you can find whatever you're looking for. Now let's see orange and red here. Now orange considering using orange in your business branding. This uh, fast company calls orange a uh, friendly color that is used by everyone from Nickelodeon to Hooters. Okay. Entrepreneur says that orange tends to appeal to an upscale market and that lighter oranges can work well into the salons, restaurants and even hospitals. So uh, orange is basically a, like a color that is like a friendly color, fun color. And uh, if you want to give a feeling of fun, okay, of friendliness in the, to your company, you can add a yellow to that, okay. She's yellow you can find in so many places. Nickelodeon uses uh, like orange, okay? Some beauty salons uses orange, restaurants uses orange, okay? 
so that's uh, how the orange usually helps uh, like you know to uh, to represent like friendship or fun now red red is a bit tricky color so red is a tricky color for markers fast company says it stands for excitement but that is also can cause an excitement in consumers that isn't always welcome entrepreneurs agree saying count on red to evoke a passionate response okay and white not always a favorable one for example uh red can represent danger or indebtedness in addition red is often used to announce big sale which might not be the vibe you're looking for so it's a bit tricky if you're using a red color uh, Coca-Cola uses red, but Coca-Cola itself is a huge company, and red has become a trademark for them because red color itself is uh, is a very high frequency color. That's why on traffic signals you will see red, so that from far, far away you can see that color. Sales usually, if you will go to any shop and there is a sale on it, so they will use red color to show that. I have not seen any other color showing sale but oh, maybe red over white or white over red okay so it's a bit tricky of to use a red color here now green uh, is the easiest color for eyes to process according to fast company and also one that brings to mind what else money okay so green when you talk about mm, like a paper like a money paper are usually printed green okay also uh, like you can say nature so entrepreneur calls it a green color, uh, like a like a serene color, that brings to mind health, freshness, and serenity. All these things explain why green show up in logos of brands like Whole Foods, Land Rover, Starbucks. Okay. So on the other hand, purple. Purple is a strong color with strong uh, like connotations. Fast Company says it is the go-to color if you're looking for to portray your brands as imaginative or wise. See Yahoo and the uh, Sci-Fi Network. They note it can also be a soothing, calming color, which is why it's a popular way to promote anti-aging products. So entrepreneur says light lavender can evoke feelings of nostalgia and sentimentality, uh, like a Hallmark logo. Also, logo uh, like purple is also uh, rep it also represents education, creativity. Okay. Now pink. Depending on what shade you go with pink, pink can be used to say a few worse things about your brand. Entrepreneur says hot pink evokes feeling of fun and youthfulness, while pale pink are more romantic. As far as can be points out, any shade of pink is going to lend your brand a feminine touch. So pink is uh, preferably used for uh, like a feminine brands, okay, like Barbie dolls any makeup sh uh, like shop or any beauty salon if you give a touch of pink it will uh, give it a uh, like a like a feeling of uh, it's a brand related to uh, like females okay now brown anthropos calls brown a dependable uh, sturdy color that also happen to be a good uh, at hiding dirt this explains why it's the color of ups and other trucking companies However, note that the dirt connotation can be turned off for some customers. So maybe don't give your bridal boutique a brown logo. So brown is not something you can use anywhere because uh, case studies shows that it is used to hide dirt. UPS is a trucking company that trucks goes from one place to another place, takes a long time, long routes. Uh, dirt everywhere can make the truck look uh unclean most most of the time so what will you do uh to hide those so you will use a like a logo on the on that truck that is brown where the dirt cannot be seen okay now keeping this uh like a concept in mind we cannot use brown for like many other things like suppose like we can you cannot use for your bridal boutique or a flower shop or a uh, any other thing that uh, you know uh, is related to fashion or other things 
Now, black and white. Black means business. That's why it's the preferred color for glamorous evening wear and stretched limousines. If you're looking to convey drama and sophistication, entrepreneurs say this color will do the trick. Fast companies wholeheartedly agree, calling this the color of upscale luxury item. So if you will see most of the famous sport brands or fashion brands, they are black color. Okay. If you will see Adidas or Nike or any other of, of like brand, mostly they are black. Because black uh, gives a feeling of luxury items or uh, elegance uh, sort of things. White, when you use white in your logo or marketing materials, you are telling people you have nothing to hide. Fast Company points out that Apple, Wikipedia and Honda are rely, all rely on white for their branding. Entrepreneurs calls it out as one of the more eye-catching color and notes that it can also denote purity and cleanliness. Okay, so white is little uh, like a, uh, a color that can have a two different kind of meanings, but one of the meaning is that you're showing that there is nothing to hide and you are open to everyone. Uh, there is no hidden uh, secrets behind the company itself. Okay, now Bringing your logo to life, how you now you know what color will suit your logo. Now bringing your logo to life, how you will bring your logo to the life. So this is the down and dirty of creating a logo. That means that there is no single way to come up with a logo. You have different processes to come up with a logo, to design a logo. There is no one process uh, that you can use. There are many different processes. Choose the process that can uh, help you to create what you're looking for. You may be the least design-minded person in the world, but if inspiration strikes you at 4 a.m. and you find yourself still uh, living the result three or four months later, just go with it. The most important thing is coming up with a logo you feel perfectly encapsulates your business. Keep on thinking first, keep on conceptualizing it first. Once you're done, then you can just go with that. Okay, so this is uh, like basically uh, like how like a theory of like a, like a theory of a logo is what a logo basically theory is. Now let's see some different kind of logos and how uh, the logos can be uh, like you know designed and what are the different elements inside the logo. Now, let's see some principles of the good logo design. Now, this, uh, I got this, uh, this uh, 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 like a presentation from a SlideShare. And like this is by Jack Venice, who, who is the graphic designer and who created this. Okay. So, uh, let's see logo versus brand. Now, you, you have a company, you have a brand, and you also have, uh, now, like decided, you will be working. You will be creating a logo. So, how you will come up with a logo uh, for your brand? Now, you should know two things first. What is logo and what is brand, and what is the difference between them? Logo identifies a business in its simplest form by the use of symbol or mark, and brand is a perceived emotional image of a company as a whole. So your logo is the representation of your company through a symbol or a visual cue. But brand is what is the whole thing. Your uh, employees' clothes, your stationary items, your office, your business itself, the whole thing is a brand. Okay. So once you know these two things, let's see. Business, uh, how you will come up. First is the business name, the core values marketing materials logo this whole thing is what it's a brand okay now types of logo let's see what are we we have different types of logo let's see some different types of logo here so we have symbol or icon easy to remember simple but bold apple logo is what is a symbol or icon and we have nike as well then we have word mark word mark simple uses a uh, use of typography Spells out business or brand. 
when we read so we can read it because it's a word mark like sony it's readable it's not a visual cue like uh, nike and apple okay fedex you we can read it okay it's a readable and you can see that in fedex we have a negative space that creates a uh, arrow here okay now we have letter mark initials of a business or brand complicated or long name suppose if i have a company named international business machines i cannot create a logo like sony or fedex because it's a very long name so i will use letter mark like hp what is hp uh, like uh, what is the full form of hp hp full form is hollett packard now i cannot like uh, i cannot write hollett packard all at once as it's a long name so i will use letter mark initials of my business okay so hp uh, ge which is general electrics okay ibm also now emblem emblem is in case design for detail complicated uh, like complicated uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a detail and complicated logo it's a more uh, complex okay and it's like a shield or something like let's see what kind of emblem famous emblems logo we have uh, harley davidson motorcycles okay it's an emblem it's like a shield nfl okay it's like a shield so it's more detailed it's more complicated and more items are uh, more elements are there okay now combination mark flexibility to use both icon and text or each individually each piece looks as good as the whole so you can also combine mark and the type okay mcdonald's this is mcdonald's logo with m it's mark and then it's type okay dominoes it's uh, name and it's symbol so you can combine them okay so color is one of the most important elements of the logo as i told you before in the previous uh, topic here color appeals to our subconsciousness sense and influences our decision okay that's why color is very important so keep in mind uh, the color okay now excitement youthful bold red blue trust loyalty confidence as uh, you know uh, i told you before trust loyalty confidence life renewal growth also nature warm clarity hope energy playful cheerful creativity wisdom royalty balance respect formal okay now red color if we will talk about here we have coca cola we have tropicana blue we have american express facebook okay uh green we have hess we have john deere yellow we have sprint uh and then we have ups ups can be brown also it, i think it's mm, some people say it's brown some people say it's yellow orange amazon nickelodeon sci-fi and yahoo is all purple here okay uh gray or white okay uh honda or apple now fonts when you use for your logo when you use fonts for your logo don't use commonly used fonts commonly used font means for screen we usually use arial helvetica comic sans times you know these are very common fonts they will not look good on your logo okay and careful with script at small sizes if you're writing script keep in mind that if your logo will be small it will be very hard to read a script when you are using a script uh, font you can use but you have to keep in mind that if it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller it will be hard to read okay now font needs to fit the overall feel of a business and uh, before continuing i will show you a website here where you can get the font for free okay so this is one of my favorite websites this is dafont.com and there are a lot of free fonts available over here where you can download the good thing is that suppose if i uh, want to search for a specific font suppose my company is about uh like a mexican restaurant so i have a foreign look font which gives me a mexican feeling so i can go here and i am i have a restaurant which is 
call uh, which is called uh, Mexicana eatery. So I can type here Mexicana eatery, and when I submit, maybe I can say show me 200 fonts on one page and submit that. So it will show me the font with the Mexican style. And whatever suits my restaurant, that font I can download. Okay. So very easy to uh, do this. Okay. So this is dafont.com. Now, logo typography font needs to be fit uh, the overall feel of a business. Now here we have uh, like this, uh, like different kind of items here, okay? Uh, like font needs to be fit to the overall feel of a business. If you will see uh, a look over here, this is a uh, this is a law firm, okay? So if my if I will use this font for a law firm, Wells Perry and Attorneys at Law, this kind of looks like it is for a children a book. Or a some uh, some sort of a uh, children playground or anything related to children. The font doesn't suit a font for an attorney uh, or a lawyer. Okay, so your font should at, uh, be selected and represent the correct look and feel of your business. So this font is. Uh, you know give a look and feel of a business of a attorney or a lawyer okay now logo consistency when your logo is done you will be uh, representing or putting the logo on different places like maybe you were looking oh you will putting on a business card or a sign board or many other places uh what if your uh, logo is changed on something so that will break a consistency. So your logo should be consistent. Your logo should be, uh, you know, uh, used as same as uh, any time it is used. So keep colors, fonts, and proportions the same across all marketing products. Don't change these things. Train staff and ICs the proper use and display of the business logo. So if you're if you have a staff of your company and you have uh, uh, people train staff or other people at your company and then using the font or sorry the logo so tell them how they should use the logo ask them not to change this or that because consistency is very important so consistency breeds recognition now remember your logo is the first impression of your business the first thing that people will look at your company is through your logo so your logo sh should be uh, attractive that can pull the customer or the consumer now five keys to a strong logo the logo have to be simple have to be memorable have to be timeless have to be versatile have to be appropriate so it should be simple to see understand it should be memorable so once you see it you you remember it for a very long time Timeless, you don't spend a lot of time to understand about what it is, okay? It should be versatile, can be used anywhere, okay? And it has to be appropriate. It, whatever you have used in your logo, like the fonts or colors or anything, have to be appropriate, okay? So that's what uh, the five keys you have. Now let's see a process how a logo is usually designed, okay? Now, here, let me do one thing. Let me close this. Okay, now let's see uh, like a process of a logo design so logo design thought process first what you need to do is that you have to come up with the idea okay and once you have idea in your mind then you put that idea uh, on the piece of paper so uh, let's uh, 
like take an example of Biz Vlog, which is an online news channel dedicated to financial news and discussion. The task was to create an animal based mark which demonstrate the business finance aspects of the channel and appeal to young adult audience. The mark also needed to be modern yet traditionally trustworthy, minimalistic and work well on social media where the channel intends to have a significant presence okay as you all know uh, different con countries rep uh, is represented by different animals okay their national animals or the historic animals that they have and wherein for example we have oryx oryx is the national animal okay apart from that we do have ox a bull which represents the Delman uh, civilization of Bahrain. Okay, so we have different animals representing Bahrain. So also, the task here is to create a logo for BizVlog, which is an online news channel dedicated to financial news. An idea is to create an animal-based mark logo. Okay, a picture, a pictorial logo, which is based on animal, uh, you know, a picture. Now, once you have that task first thing what you will do you will go for values and imagery and let's see what is a value in imagery as the starting point i use the most prominent animal associated with finance i could think of which is the charging bull in the financial district in manhattan new york city now charging bull basically is a uh, animal often associated with finance okay also in Bahrain if you will look uh, you have BFC and different companies they use bull as their symbol okay because bull is often uh, associated with uh, finance and, and these uh, kind of any anything related to monetary funds and stuff so since the world of finance is traditional I decided to use coin and gold imagery in the logo to represent that expert as well as to give it an air of trustworthiness by being based in something reliable and physical. Now, you will gather the values in imagery first. How you will do that? By taking pictures, creating a mood board. What is a mood board? Uh, collecting items that is related to what you, uh, what you are going to uh, use in future. Bull uh gold co coin money gold okay these kind of things you will start gathering that okay so you will start creating a, a, a sort of a uh mood board okay then each one of these that you have gathered take out at least three elements from there next thing you will do is that simplification and style simplifying the three main visual elements uh isn't enough on its own the little detail would get lost as the mark is scaled down and the visuals themselves are generic and not distinctive through to be used in branding now if i will take these three and out of these three i will only choose one one is not enough because if if i will simplify one i will lose the you know uh, like concept of my company which is the biz vlog and online uh, news related to finance I will lose that concept I will lose that uh, you know what I'm looking for at the moment okay so what I will do is that I need at least combination of different other elements and then simplify it okay so I have these three I will take these three simplify them okay pull coin gold this is how you can simplify you can come up with how you can simplify them basically you are creating a symbol out of it you you are making an icon out of it now your task is to merge all of these okay so i merge the bull and the coin and focus only on the bull's head in order to keep the amount of element down i can use you can use the whole uh, bull but that will create complexity. So to make it simple, only focus on the bull's head. So the, the like designer, he's saying that he only focused on the bull's head.
to in order to keep the amounts of elements down as well as to establish a square ratio necessary for the results in social media assets which has called a profile picture. So I use the gold coin bar as a lady morph in several ways later in the process. So he had in mind that okay if I will make this logo maybe it will use uh, as a profile pictures for many different social media websites okay so there the head will look good on my uh, like you know a coin picture here now he used he took the bull's head used in the coin what is left then the gold is left okay so just see that he had made he had used the coin took the bull picture added here now where is the gold because uh, how i will represent the money how it will look like a bull picture but how i will show that this is a coin so what you can do is that later is that once you have this keeping in mind the uh, other things like gold is left i want to incorporate gold now so he's saying that I stylized the bull head in contemporary monoline style, monoline style, popular with young adults, which works well at small sizes, but it is also visually interesting when blown up. The angular lines echo the angles of the gold bar. So what he did that, he thought of, okay, let's do one thing. I have this gold bar and there are angular lines here. So maybe this head instead of being circular or in this form i will create it and use this form and create the bowl in that form also this will become modern and when it will become modern uh, young people will also uh, will like it so he came up with this idea a gold bar showing with this okay now uh, and he used these lines like mono lines okay very minimalistic very uh, like you know uh, enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic young adult style okay now what is left color and flexibility the logo needs to be consistent across all possible possible digital and print uses so three colorways are used for different purposes uh, he used a three colorway it's uh, he kept it very simple a rich subtle gold gradient with a slight grain effect for texture for digital users where com uh, compatibility is not a problem this is the full version of the mark so he thought of okay gold color gold gradient gradient means the you have used for your first assignment the mix of two colors is a gradient so a single gold gradient for users uh, that can utilize color but in a limited manner such as digital edge cases uh, for example, Favicon, uh, like Favicon, and uh, like Favi, uh, like like a Fav icon, and to simplify use in print. Okay, then he uh, also used a single gold color, so that he can use on different places such as uh, like digital edge cases. You have websites. Websites usually have like Fav icons. So when you enter a website, so you will see a small icon next to it. So for that purpose, he is using single color because gradient will be too heavy for it. Then a monochrome sil uh, like a silhouette works just as well as the color variant due to the way the mark was designed from the start and can be used wherever only black and white options are available. So it's very simple. Even if he don't have any colors and where only black and white can be printed, this can easily represent the bold, the bull, and the uh, like monetary so this is the three colors which are like ways he have with the gradient single color and for black and white purposes okay now type work Merador uh, is a new classical font family which means it's blend of contemporary and traditional styles this makes it's a perfect fit for the brief and the now uh, like and the now finalized mark plus it's uh, it's serif also echo the angles of the gold bar now there are two different type of fonts as i told you before when we were studying there are uh, sans serif fonts and there is uh, there are serif fonts sans serif fonts are these okay without any kind of style okay without any kind of uh, like design around it or tail okay 
Serif fonts are the ones which have tails and design and they are not simple as this, usually like Times New Roman. Okay. So the font itself is a unique and recognizable which allows it uh, allow it to be used on its own in cases where using the logo mark won't be possible. So he used Serif family font which is called the Mirador. Okay. And uh, it's also a new classical uh, font family. Okay. And if we see this is uh, Meridor font and you can see it have tails here because this is what serifs are and that is why it's called serifs. Serifs are these kind of design and they are not simple as these fonts because you can see thin line, thick line, then thin, then thick again. Okay, here thick, here the curve is thin, here the curve is thin. Okay, so just like that we have uh, this uh, like serif okay and also tails like here we have so he used uh, this font here now in closing now plenty of other elements factor into a successful logo but i try to keep this presentation concise and interesting so i focus only on the major ones arriving at the actual look for of the mark tails knowledge experience communication feedback discussion and hundreds of iterations both in conceptions consumption and on paper Every project is unique and will require a different approach to achieve the best result and to fully display the entire process of every possible variation is borderline impossible. But I hope this rather straightforward example provides you with a general insight into the thought process behind designing a brand mark. Okay, so in closing is when finalizing the whole thing here. So this is what we have, the logo with the font uh, name with this uh, or the company name with this font okay so this is how usually uh, the process of a logo goes with it okay uh, any question regarding this is this part clear now let's see one more thing here okay now let's see different uh, logos types here okay now uh, how to create a personal logo that makes your friend jealous. It's like, yeah, you know, uh, like kind of a, a guide, like a funny guide over here. Create a, find a creative brief, summary of personal brand, image, tone, target audience, overview of competitors, due date, budget. Specify your name, what name you want. Okay, Charles Torres. Uh, or just a Torres. Or your nickname, whatever your... Uh, friends called you okay or initial so you have four different ways of showing your name okay now uh taurus is what basically uh is also a zodiac sign so he used a bull head to represent that okay find inspirations go and search for other okay work on paper and then bring it on uh, on the computer refine your concept uh keep on like designing if you do this john doe bookkeeping and maybe it, it's too childish this looks good it's more formal and it doesn't look like that kale taurus is too complex if i will do kt it will be much more better okay this looks uh very uh, obsolete this looks contemporary so maybe i will go with this james cube it's there is no good pro proximity over here. This looks disconnected. This looks more connected. So, you know, do different uh, uh, like uh, versions and see which one suits. Now, select your brand colors and then, you know, what colors are there. Professional will look more monochromatic. Uh, use one tone of the color. Fun, different colors, but that represents color like orange or red or something like that. Gentle, uh, very calm color like green and blue. So, uh, like sort of things here now there are uh, different versions of creating uh, like a logo you can say uh, symbols okay like suppose my logo uh, requires a bird like the previous logo for the business vlog he used the bull now if I'm using a uh, like a bird now how to convert a bird into a symbol there are a number of different ways to do that Understanding logo, uh, logo design brief, like first is that if you are creating a logo for a, uh, like a feminine brand, 
So you will go with the feminine approach, like here, if you can see. Okay, it looks very stylistic, very elegant, and very uh, like delicate. Okay, masculine. If you're going for you know brands, maybe I'm doing a jackets for uh, like you know extreme sports or uh, sports shoes. So I will go with the masculine uh, type. So bold, and you can see uh, the structure is very bold. Young. Uh, I will add for young uh, audiences, maybe I will keep it very, uh, you know, uh, simple, okay. But for mature, I will add some details, a little bit detail, maybe a white outline may work. Luxury, I will make it with a gold color and with a uh, like a kind of a, a you know a curved line over here. Economical, I will keep it very simple without any sort of that line. Modern maybe uh same as luxury but i will add a like, like a secondary plus classic uh you know uh like a normal but keep in mind maybe you're talking about 1960s or 50s logo so how you will uh do that because 50s and 60s usually uses something like you know uh like detailed with a single color and then you know some outline white monochromatic outline playful something with the double meaning like here it looks like a hand is holding a bird okay or it also looks like a hand holding a paper serious just with the minimalistic most minimalistic lines you can create a bird out of it okay loud will be more detailed quiet will be just a silhouette okay simple a very less curve okay subtle maybe more less curve complex is more uh, closer to the real bird itself the picture obvious so people can understand when they see they don't have to uh, you know think about what it is they will see clearly see oh it's a picture of a bird okay organic mainly using the color uh, and symbols okay colors and symbols related to the bird actually and actually geometrical using shapes okay like uh, like a geometrical shapes and creating bird out of it and let's see one more case study here I, I may, like there is a brand here which is called genius okay and this is the final output now how this logo was developed first the brand developed it's a comp it's an entrepreneur company so entrepreneur can be a person and then idea when you think about an idea uh you think about a bulb you know in cartoons whenever uh, if you have seen cartoons uh Whenever a cartoon character thinks of an idea, a bulb pops up on his head. So that can be one part. So when you combine them together and come up with the idea, okay. Uh, if you have class, just like this is the last, uh, last slide. And uh, after this one, I will explain uh, your midterm, okay. Uh, just wait for a few minutes, okay. Uh, I will just be ending this now. Now, I have brand building here like this one can be a person you can see this is a person if i hide this one from here but this uh idea thing which is popping up is creating and converting this thing into a g it represents g okay so this is how you will get all this whole thing here now this one i have uploaded you can see that this is the same thing as the bird but different way of representing a mock realistic semi-realistic decorator and you can abstract you can see that it's already in your uh in your uh like your on your teams okay uh now one thing before you all leave i want to share is with your midterm project here okay so quickly i will do that already is there is self-explanatory uh, you don't have to uh more worry about it so it's in the assignments if you will go you have midterm project which is due on november 4th but don't worry i'll try to push the date okay because there is a holiday now on thursday that's why i, I couldn't uh, a rematch with my current schedule so i might uh, i will try my best to reschedule it now what you need to do is that here let me explain it quickly is that 
choose the word that is written next to your name in the P in the given PDF file. So here is a PDF file. If you will open the PDF file, your names are given there, and next to your name are the names of the company. Okay. So if I zoom here, you can see that, for example, uh, like Fiza, uh have a uh, like a company named Karma Brews. So she have to make a logo of a Karma Brews. Okay. So uh, like a coffee brewery or something like that. So she will use, or she can, uh, it's, it's a coffee shop maybe, okay. Now, uh, transform it into a logo that mainly relies on a metaphor through manipulating certain express of the letters and shape into, uh, in order to reflect the signification of the word. So you have Karma Bruce, just go with that uh, file, which I uh, just showed you this one, I have already attached here, okay. Go with this process, the same process which I explained in the class, this one, and create a logo out of it, a brand, uh, like a, your logo and the text, your uh, font, okay? Print the design on 1000 by 1000 pixels uh, illustrator file and JPEG file and also include minimum 100 words paragraph of brief as word file. And also write about the way it you see here, he, he made everything. The whole thing is the same as this. You have to write in a Microsoft Word with the pictures, okay? And upload along with the logo. Upload in the des 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 uh, like designated area because uh, if you will send me on the chat window, it is very hard for me to read. So don't put it on chat window. Put it inside the assignment. You will see the upload option here. If you have still op uh, problems, please uh, check with the Deepu. So he will solve your issue, okay? and uh, present your work in the uh, Microsoft Teams, okay? And attach are the, uh, your names in the list and your logo over here. And here is the rubric. So you can check in the rubric how you will be graded, okay? So uh, sorry for uh, holding you uh, longer, okay? So now uh, you can, uh, we will meet next week. Happy holidays, okay? and take care of yourself okay everyone yes just make up the company uh, or we the, have to no the company name is written here in this name if you will give, go it's already given to you okay so it's not a true company it's a uh, it's, okay. it, it's it's basically like a randomly generated name Okay. So suppose if your uh, your name is here, Phantom Tube. Okay, Phantom and Tube. So maybe it's an online channel, uh, like a online channel like a YouTube. Okay, but the name is Phantom and Tube. So you have to think about the idea how I can use Phantom and use it as a. Uh, channel, online channel, something like that, okay? Clear? Clear. Any, yes, any other question? You. So, uh, take care, happy holidays, and we'll meet next week, and we'll continue now again with the illustrator. So, take care, everyone.